Hi guys, welcome to sixth grade, chapter eight, lesson four. We're gonna go ahead and get started on number two. So um, just like before, I want you guys to think of this as a kind of teeter-totter, okay? And whatever you do to this side of the equal sign, you have to do the same thing to this side, okay? So you will notice I need to get X alone, okay? So in order to get X alone, I have to do the opposite of what this is so that it cancels out. If I do that over here, I need to do that over here as well, okay? So this is our teeter-totter, okay? So now I'm left with X on this side and 15 minus three on this side, okay? Well, X then equals 12, okay? All right. Okay. N plus two-fifths equals four-fifths, okay? So I need to get N alone, okay? So that means that I need to subtract two-fifths over here and subtract two-fifths over here, okay? I just wrote it up here because that way it's easier to do. And look with N equals, my denominator stays the same as we learned in our fraction segment, and four minus two is two. Okay, then, okay? So, they are gonna try and throw you off a little bit by mixing these up so that you have your number on this side with the equal sign and then the actual problem on the other side. It's the same thing, guys, okay? Don't freak out. I need to get M alone, so I need to add 14, which means I need to add 14 over here. That means that six plus four is 10, carry that one, one plus one plus one is three, equals M, which means 30, okay? You guys totally got this, okay? They're gonna try and throw you off a little bit again with those decimals, okay? So W minus 13.7 equals 22.8, okay? So all we're gonna do, we wanna get this alone. We need to do the opposite of that sign. So we're gonna add 13.7. We're gonna add 13.7. Notice how I lined up those decimals. Okay, drop the decimal. We're gonna wind up with W equals eight plus seven is 15, carry the one. One plus two is three, plus three more is six, and two plus one is three. Okay. Okay, you guys are gonna finish you know, we'll go down and we'll do number nine since it's been a little while since you guys have worked with fractions. I will give you that little bit of grace. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do number nine. Okay, so you guys are going to do six, seven, and eight. Okay, I am going to do number nine with you. M minus two and three quarters equals six and one half. Okay, still doing the opposite. Okay, whatever I do to this side, I have to do to this side. Okay, if you will be so kind to remember that I took my whole numbers and I stuck them over here. Okay, now I just have to worry about adding up my fractions and then I can worry about all those whole numbers. Okay, so. Common denominator, going to be four. I have to multiply this by two, so multiply the top by two. So then I have two over four plus three over four, okay? Denominator stays the same, two plus three is five. Now, you will notice that the top is bigger than the bottom and that is a problem. So four goes into five. One time, I'm going to add that one whole number there, okay? Four goes into five one time. I would have one left over and my denominator stays the same. So now all I have to do is add up my whole number. Six plus two is eight plus one more is nine. Nine and one quarter, okay? 
Okay, you guys are gonna have to write down your work. So pause this, do whatever you need to do to write it down. Okay, all right. You guys can totally do the rest. That already has a common denominator. You've got this rocket. You're gonna have to borrow one. We've done that. Uh, you know what? Let's do number eleven together. It's been a while. Okay, so we're gonna do three and one third equals b minus. Two thirds. Oh, you guys aren't actually going to have to borrow because just add it, silly me. So equal sign, okay? Opposite plus two thirds plus two thirds. So now I have three, and my denominator stays the same. And one plus two is three. Well, three over three is equal to one, so it's equal to four. Okay, so. You guys are doing six, seven, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, we will go ahead and do thirteen and fourteen. Okay, so thirteen says a recipe calls for five and a half cups of flour. Lorenzo only has three and a quarter cups of flour. Write and solve an equation to find an additional amount of flour Lorenzo needs to make the recipe. Well. He has three and three quarters, right? He needs however many cups of flour to make five and a half cups, right? Now let's do the math, okay? So three and three quarters plus F flour equals five and a half. Okay, ready? So we want F alone to know how much we still need. That means I have to do the opposite of the sign. Okay. Whatever I do to that side, I have to do to this side. Okay. All right. So now I have F equals five and a half minus three and three quarters. Okay, I'm going to need a common denominator, which is going to be 4, so I need to multiply this by 2 to get to 4, which means I need to multiply that. So now I have 5 and 2 fourths minus 3 and 3 fourths. Now, 2 cannot take away 3, so I need to borrow 1. So now I have 4. And I'm going to add on a 4 over 4 because that's equal to the one that I borrowed. Okay. So now I'm going to have 6 over 4 minus 3 and 3 quarters. Okay. All right. So 4 minus 3 is 1. My denominator stays the same. And 6 minus 3 is 3. So F equals one and three quarters cup. Okay, write your work down, guys. It's important. Okay, all right. Jan used 22.5 gallons of water in the shower. This amount is 7.5 times less than the amount she used for washing clothes. Write and solve an equation to find the amount of water Jan used to wash clothes. Okay, so we can do okay, so we know she used 22.5 gallons. Okay, subtract, we'll just say x equals 7.5 gallons. Okay. Mm. Hold on just a second. Okay. Sorry, guys, I did this backwards. My bad. Okay. So we have the amount of gallons she used subtracting the 7.5 gallons equals the 22.5. Okay. Sorry, this way it gets turned around sometimes too. Okay, so now in order to find out what X is, add 7.5, add 
at 7.5. Notice how I lined up those dots and that. And x equals, drop that decimal, carry the one, carry the one again, 30 gallons. Okay, write your work down, not my goof. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and go on to the back. You guys are going to do the lesson check because you're brilliant. And... We're going to go down and do spiral review, okay? How would you convert mass in centigrams to mass in milligrams? Well, let's get King Henry out. So from centi to milli, we would move the decimal one time, okay? Moving it one time means, to the right, means that we would add a zero or multiply by 10. So your answer will be multiply by 10. Done. Okay. You would go from centigrams to milligrams, move the decimal one time, moving it one time means multiplying it by 10. Okay. All right. In the expression, 4 plus 3x plus 5y, what is the coefficient of x? Well, the coefficient of x is just the number that's attached to it, 3. Okay. Write an expression that is equivalent to 10c. Okay. So you could do any number of things, guys. You could do 11c minus 1c. You could do 20C minus 10C. You could do oh, 7C plus 3C. You could do any number of things as long as it ends up with TC. A 10C. Sorry, guys, not TC. Okay. Anything. Any of those is fine as long as your answer would be 10C. Okay? All right. Miranda bought a movie ticket and popcorn for a total of $10. The equation 7 plus X equals 10 can be used to find the cost X in dollars with the popcorn. How much did the popcorn cost? Well, okay. So, 7 plus X equals 10. Okay, so opposite of the sign, minus 7 minus 7 X equals $3. Okay. All right, guys. Good job. Thanks for hanging out for 8.4. Come on back for 8.5. See you soon.